Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick Terry and today I have an exciting new video for you guys. Today, we're gonna be talking about why clients fail with our agency. I think it's a very important video to talk about, especially if you're on the fence of working with our agency to kind of have some key points in mind of like, hey, what went wrong with clients? What went right with some clients? So with that being said, before we get started, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now, with that being said, let's get started guys. <laughs> So why clients fail with our agency? I got like, I think eight or nine different points, but let's get started. So number one, this is the biggest one of all is trust. Okay. We find that all of our clients are crushing it right now. They basically just, as soon as they signed the contract, they handed us the keys and they walked away. Okay. From the ad side, at least <laughs> not from the business, just the ad side. Okay. Cause we're going to talk about the other part in a second too. And they just trust us from day one. They, they just, they, they saw my video content online. They seen our case studies. They knew that we can get results for them and they went in with that fact of trust and we've been able to crush it for them. And the reason why is because we've been, we've worked with some clients, um, that are no longer working with us. And because when we took over their account, we start working on it. They would turn off campaigns, like our campaigns, you know, like we'll be testing, like doing our creative testing campaign to look at a campaign overall. I'm like, yeah, campaign overall on creative testing sucks. You know, if, if you're looking at it from a pro ass and post purchase perspective, and then they'll go and look at, you know, they'll turn off and launch something new on their own. So like, it's mostly just that the trust level right there where they feel like they need to still go in the ads manager and create stuff. Um, whereas like, some clients are just, Hey, cool. You got this. They don't even look at it, that accounts anymore. And they see really great results. So number one is trust. And also too, I think like some clients, they go into <laughs> this, this may or may not be with trust as well. Some clients will go into it with the mind of an ego complex in the way of where they're like, I taught myself media buying. I know media buying everything like that. They go into the relationship with where it's like a competition. Okay. They don't just give us the keys and let us go. It's like a competition where they're like, I can outdo you, yada, yada, yada. And they, they don't see that value within us. And then it just, it ultimately ends. Um, whereas we've worked with other clients that basically they, they did all the media buying. They grew the accounts to a certain level and they were like, okay, cool. Hey, I want to hand it off to someone else. Um, and we came in, they allowed us to have that trust. We were able to work on the account. We moved it forward. Um, and then, you know, they're doing better than ever before. So again, just trust. You need to be able to be able to trust that that person is good. And a lot of the times, regardless of what agency you work with, the best way to build trust is by showing off and seeing results from that agency. So whether you work with us or any other agency, look at it from the perspective of, okay, cool. Like how can I trust them the most? Let me look at other accounts they've worked on. So like we give all of our clients case studies, testimonials. We've even given clients email addresses from my other clients. All of them's even email them and like for like straight up reviews and recommendations and stuff like that. So do everything you can to build that trust. Cause if you do not trust your agency going into that deal, it will not end right. They, the agency will not get the results you want. If, especially if there's a competition, the ad account, you're creating stuff behind their back, stuff like that. Like that's just no go. So trust is a huge one. Now, the second biggest thing behind trust is lack of ad creatives. Okay. So lack of ad creatives is something that we, this is probably like the second biggest thing of why clients leave us is that they do not have the creatives that we need. And now like it's obviously a two part story here. There's the story of, all right, the client has to go out there and film the ads and stuff. Then there's the other part where the agency edits the ads, puts them together and stuff like that. And then the, well, I guess you say there's a third part as well. The agency filming or like giving the script ideas and all that to the clients. So in a win-win situation, we put together a bunch of different scripts and stuff like that. The client goes out, films them. Our edit team creates it. Boom. You know, we agree on everything first. Boom. We shoot it. It goes, you know, we have a lot of different ads to shoot. Some clients we work with that, uh, they, we grew on everything and they just never do it. We, and then they text us like a week later, Hey, it was results. I'm like, we need new ads. Oh, well, what can we do about that? Here, go shoot these following ad ideas. Okay, cool. Got it. A week later, text me back. Hey, results are still not good. I'm like, did you take action on these specific ads? Oh no, I've been busy. I've been doing this, this, this. What else can we do? I'm like, we're going to lower spend to improve performance. Or you go and shoot these ads and we have new ads that we can cycle in. Okay, got this. Then ended them up. Hey, performance still not where it's at. I'm like, did you take action on these ads at all that we've agreed on the beginning of the month? No. Okay. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> like <laughs> we're done. Okay. I understand you're busy, but also too, you know, like we're coming in and you know, we're helping you 
in the sense of this is what like guiding you in kind of a mentor relationship side guiding you which you gotta do to be successful and if if you can't do that then like you know we're wasting both our times here because i'm trying to make you as much money as possible in this sense right here so lack of accuracy is huge um but again it's, it's a two-part story because yes there's the client execution side but it's also the agency side of providing those ideas and scripts and things like that that's big um some clients it and it also too depends on at some level of what the client needs like some clients we can just give them like a list of headlines and they'll go create a bunch of ads around those headlines they'll you know they'll do the script everything like that and then they send it back to me you know three reasons three reasons why i love my pants i'll send them like that ad right there uh, that ad create a type and they'll go create a few different ads with that different settings different scripts things like that some clients need even more of like a script as well where it's just like hey get you know say these key things but you know still add your own flair to it as well so like that's another thing too so it is a two-part story agency to provide those ideas and things like that to go do and then also to the clients to go shoot them and if either one doesn't work it results in a lack of ad creatives and lack of ad creatives leads to bad performance bad performance equals nine times it's in why the agency or the client will leave uh leave that particular agency now store versus brand um this is generally the third one is what happens the most and this is what happens usually around six month month six to month 12 okay so we've been working with an account for a few months now everything's good but we're noticing that overall our cost per acquisition is going up and because we're spending more and we're not really like if we turn off ads no one comes back to us why because we're just a store we're just like a general store a brand is someone that like a brand in a store a store just has something you need whereas a brand has something you need plus you also identify with it as well so building a brand launching new products um improving customer service improving customer um you know shipping like product delivery all that stuff right there just overall building a better business and building a brand that's going to be here for long term we're going to see a substantially better results and a client stay with us for a long time. But if it's just a store and <laughs> there's really no other reason to purchase any other products, no one's really focusing on the AOV, the LTV, building that branding into it. It's just a general store. Nine times out of 10, they will fail um, at a later point because there's nothing that's keeping them coming back. There's nothing they identify with. And it's just, yeah, go with a brand that's going to serve and be around for people for a long time. Now, this is like the last possible thing that we'll see from our immediate clients failing versus before I go into these other ones that are more like very, very odd, very rare that happens. And it's a trending product. So we always like, we always, we've worked with a few trending products now um, where like, yeah, like they worked really well for like a month or two and that's it. And that's also another big thing right there. It kind of goes back to store versus brand where a store might have like one or two trending products and a brand will have a collection of products that's going to serve for a long time. And they're constantly improving and building new products that's going to be launched to a store and they complete consistently keep improving their customer avatar and serving their customer avatar on a day-to-day -day basis. A trending product will be, I see this more nine times out of 10 with drop shippers that work with us. That's why we don't really work with drop shippers anymore because what will happen is they have a trending product that will go find, I don't know, fucking, uh, what were those, uh, those fidget spinners they're like a fidget spinner type thing where like it crushes for like a month or two and regardless of the creatives everything like that it's just like people don't want it okay and that's a big problem so there is ways to turn trending products into like brands but if it's just a short flashy trending product that converts well for a little bit and then go out like that definitely becomes an issue so yeah so trending products so that's why we like again we like to work with brands doing at least 50k a month they've been in business for a little while um they're more of a brand they built out other products they have good aov um they're not just having this one product that's like a short-term trend so that's another one right there now we're gonna start digging into stuff that's not really doesn't really happen often but it has happened at one point okay this is actually happened to one of our clients inventory issues where they literally scaled up well they scaled them up to like three million dollars in um you know from like literally nothing to three million dollars uh annual revenue and for the last three months of our contract they started going ahead and doing pre-orders so for three months straight they did nothing but pre-orders on their products okay no inventory at all it was all overseas they're waiting for it to get in and they needed ways to fund the inventory. So they started doing pre-orders on, on products they didn't have to fund that inventory. And yeah, create a huge cash flow and inventory issue. And in fact, the next one is cash flow. So it's, I'm just gonna do a two part for this one right here. So it's be inventory and cash flows. So last three months of us working together, they had no inventory. They were just selling pre-orders. And guess what? Like the like month in, last month in, everyone wanted a re, uh, refund. 
that all on all this money that they used to find <laughs> inventory overseas. So they had literally like basically kind of went broken since they had to cut their their everything drastically. Um, and at the time too, like it just it just was good performance for ads. So they were spending more to make more. And then because again, who at cold top of funnel, who wants to buy a pre-order item? Okay, no one wants to buy a cold pre-order item. So their ROAS is lower, all their profits in inventory overseas, they're basically broke. <laughs> Not necessarily, but they're pretty close to it when it came down to cash and inventory. So between those two things right there, like it just, it created a financial disaster for their, their business and we parted ways. So that's basically inventory and cash. It's a huge one. And then number seven is not improving their business. And this is another, this is again, it's gonna kind of go around store versus brand as well. And like trending product, not improving their business. So one particular client we've worked with, we've done an amazing job for them. We've helped them do, I think roughly like over $5 million total in revenue. Um, at like a 3.4, 3.5X ROAS, just really great, okay? But month over month, they started performing worse and worse and worse. Why? because they had pretty much just one product that was primarily doing good. They weren't sending us any other products. Uh, their other products were converting. They had a lot of shipping issues. They had a high refund rate because people were getting their products. Yeah, and if you ask them anything about performance in the store, they didn't know nothing about it because at the end of the day, they hired us on and they basically pretty much just gave us responsibility for everything. And we've battled that back and forth, battled back and forth, and then basically just went to, you know, at the end of the day, they didn't have a strong enough why at all. So they didn't care about improving the business at all. They were just collecting a check each month and they pretty much just let us handle everything um, in terms of the comments on social media and the ads. So yeah, <laughs> they did not know anything about their business. They care less about it. They were just collecting a check. Let's let them start improving it. We're only acquisition specialists. We focus on acquiring as many customers as possible. Whereas you need to be able to be improving your business by, okay, cool. People are not having, if people are having shipping issues, then go fix it. Go figure out a way to fix it. If like I'm saying, like a very high refund rate because people were not getting their products. Um, very, very high, like ridiculously high. And it wasn't even like, you know, drop shipping. It was literally shipping out of the same place, you know, everything like that. So focus on improving your business. Look at your acquisition. Cool. You have an agency doing your acquisition. All right. What's other areas of your business we can improve? Okay. Hey, 90% of our customers do not never purchase from us again. Why? What, how can we improve that? Cause that's a big issue right there. If none of your customers are purchased from you again, that's a huge issue with your business because the moment you turn those ads off, no one will purchase from you. Don't purchase from you. You go out of business. So you need a way to build your business without ads. And that's one huge one right there is in consistently improving your business, um, having an LTV and all that in place. So, but yeah, guys, and in terms of that, uh, just off the top of my head, uh, that's like the main reasons why people have failed with our agency. Um, I'm definitely going to probably do another video of what makes our clients winners in terms of that right there for people that want to work for agency and want to know, Hey, what's our winning clients What's some of our success traits of our winning clients and that side as well. Um, but yeah, appreciate you guys for watching this video. Make sure you hit the like button, hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you guys so much for watching this channel. And uh, again, if you're making at least $50,000 per month with your business, click link below to book a call with me and my team. We'll hop on a strategy session together. And during that strategy session, we'll put together a few things for you to where you can take it and run with it, apply it to your business, or you have the option to work with us if you choose. And yeah, and with that being said, uh, if you're making less than $50,000 per month, stay subscribed to the channel uh, because this channel is designed to make you more money in that sense right there, showing you off everything. And yeah, thank you guys so much for the support. Again, my name is Nick Terrio. Talk to you guys later. Peace.